Hinge Access and Facebook. In the previous presentation, we discussed about orientation of jaws, orientation jaw relation and hinge axis. So this presentation is a continuation of the same. Moving ahead now, first let's just recap the significance of hinge axis and what is its practical application in the determination of centric relation. In order to secure a centric interocclusal record, we attempt to freeze the terminal hinge closure at a convenient vertical opening and we wouldn't be able to do so if it were not for the hinge axis. We know that centric relation is independent of tooth contact. So when we are trying to obtain an accurate centric interocclusal record, we need to do this so that the recording medium is not penetrated by the teeth or the occlusal rims. In order to avoid penetration, at least in case of dentulous patients, we need to obtain a centric interocclusal record in an open relationship. That means that the patient needs to move the jaw along the same arcs of closure. Otherwise, the record is going to be futile. Thus, it is impossible to check a centric interocclusal record without an access mounting. Cohen in 1960 described an instrument which he termed as an hinge access trainer which was used to train patients to open and close the mandible in the hinge manner so that the jaw moves along the same arc of closure. The position of the condyle when this movement occurred was not a retruded position or a forced position but a position when the condyles were sealed in the glenoid fossa as far posterior as they would go by their own muscular power. So it was basically a natural physiological position. Cohen further stated that once the hinge access points had been located and marked permanently, it was never necessary to repeat the procedure because these hinge access points correlate to anatomic structures and the anatomic structures do not change in life. Therefore, these hinge access points are not going to be variable. Similar to centric relation, it can be said that hinge access is a stable, learnable, recordable, reproducible and repeatable position. Therefore, it is used as an important reference in mounting cast in the articulator so that the opening axis of the articulator coincides with the terminal hinge axis of the patient. And how is this recording done? It is done using a face bow. So there have been multiple definitions put forth for face bow. I'll just mention a few. According to glossary of prosthodontic terms, Facebo is a caliper-like instrument which is used to record the spatial relationship of the maxillary arch to some anatomic reference point or points and then transfer the relationship to the articulator. According to Boucher's 11th edition, a similar definition, it is a caliper-like device that is used to record the relationship of the jaws to the temporomandibular joint or the opening axis of the jaws and to orient the cast in the same relationship to the opening axis of the articulator. And according to Hartwell in 1992, Facebo is a caliper-like device used to record the, the relationship of maxilla to the temporomandibular joint. So these definitions refer to a caliper-like instrument. A caliper or plural tantum, it is a device which is used to measure distance between two opposite sides of an object. So a face bow is similar to a caliper. What it basically does is, using face bow, we try to find the orientation of the maxilla. So here in this image you can see the red line corresponds to the orientation of the maxilla and in the same way we orient the maxillary cast in the articulator. So why do we need to do that? Because the closure of the mandible does not occur in a straight upward movement but rather in a curve. So we need to identify the exact curve in which the mandible is moving during opening and closure. So here in this patient's mouth, the blue line corresponds to where the maxilla is present. Using a face bow, we identify that orientation and the same way we orient the maxillary cast so that when we fix the mandibular cast in the articulator it will move along the same arc of closure so basically we simulate this arc of closure in the articulator using a facebook 
Now let's take a brief look at the history of Facebook, how it came into use in the modern era. The initial report was given by George B. Snow in 1899, who invented a device which became prototype for modern Facebook, looking something like this. Later on, in 1924, the Snow Facebook was the first instrument which was used by B.B. McCollum to locate the hinge axis. So this is considered to be the first practical use of Facebook. Since the introduction of Snow's apparatus, no fundamental changes have been made in the Facebook design. Facebooks are broadly classified into two types. The kinematic Facebook or the mandibular type and the arbitrary Facebook or the maxillary type. Mandibular or kinematic phase bow or the hinge axis phase bow locates the exact axis of rotation of the condyles. Whereas the maxillary phase bow relates the maxilla to the exact or arbitrary position of the condylar axis and transfers this relationship to the articulator. The kinematic phase bow requires specific instruments. So it is a more extensive apparatus, whereas the arbitrary phase bow is comparatively simple to handle as it does not require such an elaborate equipment. So that is the benefit of arbitrary phase bow. Whereas the benefit of kinematic phase bow is that it locates the hinge axis physiologically with exceptional accuracy. The arbitrary phase bow can locate true hinge axis within a range of 5 millimeters. Now because kinematic phase bow is quite cumbersome, it requires special equipment, so it requires skill, it is time consuming, so all these make its use more theoretical than practical. Whereas arbitrary phase bow is quite easy to use, it is commonly used in clinical practice. Now though kinematic phase bow is cumbersome to use, we cannot overlook its benefit. So in cases where we need to determine orientation relation and centric relation, we should use a kinematic phase bow. Whereas arbitrary phase bow only determines the orientation of maxilla, so it cannot be used in all cases. So arbitrary phase bow is one of the commonly used one for complete denture construction. It uses arbitrary points or also termed as approximate points on the face which are termed as posterior points and condylar rods are positioned on these points. Arbitrary phase bows can be of two types, fascia type and earpiece type. The fascia type utilizes approximate points on the skin over the temporomandibular region and these are termed as the posterior reference points. These are located by taking measurements from certain anatomical landmarks on the face and it can also be its biggest disadvantage meaning that in this method we locate points on the face in the temporomandibular region now the skin over the temporomandibular region is movable so there is a tendency that the condylar rods can get displaced and additionally you also require an assistant to hold the face bow in place the next type is the earpiece type which uses external auditory meatus as an arbitrary reference point and here the earpieces are aligned similar to how we use a stethoscope. So the advantage of the earpiece type is that it does not require measurements on the face, it is simple to use and it is as accurate as other face bows. But we need to bear this in mind that regardless of which arbitrary position is chosen, an error of 0.2 millimeters from the axis can be expected with an arbitrary face bow. The parts of a face bow so this is an example of a spring bow or Hanaus face bow which is the most commonly used face bow. So basically it is constructed in three bars, one anterior and two lateral. So this bar consists of a U-shaped frame and at the end is the calibrated condylar axis along with a tightening clamp. The bite fork has two extensions on either side which which enter the mouth while taking the measurements known as the bite fork blade. In the center there is a locking clamp which locks the bite fork to the u-shaped frame. Next to the bite fork is a pointed structure which is the infraorbital pointer. The infraorbital pointer corresponds to the third reference point and along with the two condylar reference points it is used to orient the face per assembly to an anatomical reference point on the face. 
It varies in different types of face bows. So this was about face bow, the history of face bow, different types of face bow and parts of a face bow. In the next presentation, we shall take a look at the techniques for recording hinge access using a face bow. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.